federal agencies have a trust obligation to fund Indian tribes at levels that um, are consistent with our tr uh, managing our trust resources. The Quinault Nation undertook two different studies, one in 2007 and 2008, that dramatically showed uh, a decline uh, baseline funding and how that impacts us. We had a, a BIA shortage of foresters, and while it may seem like a, a simply a personnel matter, that translated to our uh, annual allowable cut being two and a half uh, years behind. That meant $12 million to our national budget. Uh, we also looked at our uh, managing our fisheries resource and enforcement. We've been the same funding 20 years, and our fishery resource has tripled in that 20 years. We've lost 30% of our spending power, and it's, it's really impacted us at home. So I just really encourage you to continue your vision and foresight to honor uh, our commitment on a government-to-government -government level as well as uh, the trust obligation the United States has to adequately fund our most sacred resources. Thank you. It was a real honor to be a part of the tribal leaders gathering with the President of the United States as a father, grandfather, and not only leader of the Swinomish tribe, but the affiliated tribes of Northwest Indians. We were really honored to be invited back to Washington, D.C. to meet with the President of the United States. In regards to our cultural and our spiritual lands on Chuichin village site that was desecrated by a mass destruction of the mills in Port Angeles area, Port Angeles, Washington, and we were fortunate enough to be able to rebury over 300 of our ancestral remains. The issues are that we're concerned with our Niagara in pertaining to some of the laws to change so that it protects not only our ancestral remains as well as the non-natives um, for the protections of some of the pioneer lands that we have out there because we are not bordered uh, based with our tribes it was the non-natives who had put the lands and the territories into divisions because we are all of one and we have been united. But we ask that the commissions and the, the um, secretaries of the state here to address the importance of our cultural resources and the protections of the graves that we have out there that are a national concerns that we have with our environment. Following is an excerpt of the speech that I was going to give to the president but did not get the opportunity. What started as promises to the first Americans is now reality. Da adubsh, President Obama. We are honored to be here with you today in the first of many presidential tribal summits. We look forward to seven more summits with you. We value your actions of unifying and partnering with us as it will take all Americans for us to survive. My name is Brian Cladisby. My co Salish name is Svee Potts. I am the chairman of the Swinomish tribe and president of the affiliated tribes of Northwest Indians. Our 57 tribes have a relationship with the federal government through treaties, federal statutes, agreements, and executive orders. We have a simple request. The United States must fulfill these commitments and trust responsibilities to the first Americans. Time and time again, tribal leaders have heard the words and signed promises that have not been fulfilled. But we see your leadership has changed. We can believe in that. Because historically, you know, the man always goes out and hunts and works, and, uh, and it's kind of a, uh, it takes a toll on an individual's pride, on a man's pride, not being able to do that because the opportunity is either limited or not there. And so, when I, when I bring forward to you about how, this, how all of this plays in, you know, as a state senator, I see a lot of integral parts of this. As tribal leaders, we go to the feds, they say, hey, wait a minute, you go back to your states, we have the money, some money that we took, we, that we given the states that you're qualified for. Well, by golly, we go to the states, and then the states said, no, you go back to the feds because you're fe rewards of the federal government. So we're kind of, kind of like a ping pong going back and forth, kind of, left out there in, uh, in no man's land. And, and that, that's one of the things that, you know, the federal departments always tell us, you know, that, uh, that th this relationship that uh, tribes have with the states is hunky-dory, but, you know, it, it isn't like that. And so if, 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 when there are monies that you give to the states, what you need to do is bring the tribes to the table because there are rulemaking processes and all of these other uh, processes that, that 
impact tribes. And we need to be at the table so we can define what is, what is appropriate and what, what is not appropriate, what is inappropriate for tribes. And it's very important that we be a part of this process from day one to, uh, to the end. I would like to read a few words from a great leader, Chief Joseph of the Nez Perce from the Northwest, who came to speak to the United States government 130 years ago. Unfortunately, he was making the same request we are giving you today. Please do not burden our great-grandchildren. In the words of Chief Joseph, I have seen the great father, chief, the president, the great chief, the secretary of the interior, and many other law chiefs, the congressmen. They all say they are my friends and that I shall have justice. But while their mouths all talk right, I do not understand why nothing is done. Good words do not last long until they amount to something. Words do not pay for my dead people. Good words will not give my people good health and stop them from dying. Good words will not get my people a home where they can live in peace and take care of themselves. I am tired of talk that comes to nothing. It makes my heart sick when I remember all the good words and all the broken promises. There need be no trouble. Treat all men alike. Give them all the same law. Give them all an even chance to live and grow. I only ask the government be treated as all other men are treated. We only ask an even chance to live as other men live. We ask to be recognized as men. We ask the same law shall work alike on all men. If the Indian breaks the law, punish him by law. If the white man breaks the law, punish him also. And so it's a real honor to read the quotes that the great Nez Perce chief, Chief Joseph, gave 130 years ago. Uh, DOJ did a great job with the listening conference last week, and we identified that there's many issues. Number one, out of the result of 94 with President Clinton and the listening conferences with Janet Reno, there was an effort to try to collate law enforcement from BIA and, and DOJ. That did not work. So my, my uh, challenge to you and, and request to you in terms of how you're responding is how DOJ and DOI will collaborate to elevate the, the base funding for law enforcement and courts and, and youth protection services that are essential for our programs. And we do need more money. The courts have been, have been leveled off for, for 25 years. So that's one challenge. The second is as a, as a result of, of these, these atrocities that are going on here. Uh, the Chairman Mastin from, from California raised the 280. There are a number of atrocities that have come down through the Supreme Court. The Williams Lee, the Plains Co Commerce Bank, the Atkins uh, Trading Company, the Cotton Petroleum uh, uh, decision, and last but not least, the elephant in the room. That case has got to be reversed. Our, uh, this is about our sovereignty. This is about our authority. We need you and DOJ to advance with the Congress uh, uh, legislation to reverse the, the impact of those decisions that were inappropriate coming down from the Supreme Court to reaffirm the tribe's sovereignty for the protection of our people and our communities. All of us did not arrive here today alone. We walked into the room carrying the hope of our ancestors. You can't see them here, but you can hear them in our voices. President Obama, in the same way you are trying to do the right thing for American people, we as tribal leaders are trying to do the right thing for first Americans. We know in our hearts this time must be different, and we are committed to your administration for a fundamental new direction to address our needs in Indian Country. We all strive down a path of solution together to ensure our America survives for generations to come. This is all we ask of you, Mr. President. We ask that you reaffirm the executive order and strengthen it throughout your entire administration to serve as a real mechanism for accountability. Secondly, we ask that you endorse the United Nations Declaration of Rights on Indigenous Peoples and commit to the strong American Declaration of Equitable Treatment to its sovereign nations. Your election as President of the United States shattered the shackles of slavery. You now have the opportunity to bring reconciliation to 570 years of injustice and close another sad and disgraced chapter of our great nation's history, while opening a new chapter of hope for this nation's first Americans. Chief Joseph is right. Good words do not last long until they amount to something. If it seems we are anxious for results, Mr. President, it is because we are. It has been building up and passed on from generation to generation. This is our time.